Hey yeah. So personally, when I'm buying hardwood, I'm not a massive fan of traipsing around timber yards on the weekend. I tend to go for the internet. So here's what I do. I really like this website called Timber Source. They've got drop down menus, you can look at different types of wood and see how to use them. They've also got this really cool cut list facility, so you can select the wood you want, select the dimensions, whether you want it to be rough sawn or planed, and you can play about with all these settings so you can work out how to get the best value for the money you're spending. Personally, I always try to buy it in the same sizes and dimensions that it gets imported in. So it comes in rough sawn, and then usually I can get the best yield for my money. I find these guys really good. They normally deliver it within two or three days, they're helpful on the phone, and the quality of wood that I've always had has been brilliant. Okay, let's get back to the build. Okay, there's a couple of bits I should probably clear up at this point. Number one, why am I dressed like a PE teacher from Grain Shield? That's because I coach a kids football team. Number two, what am I actually building today? Let's take a look at the plans. So it's two bathroom cabinets built from tulip wood. They have shaker style doors, one has a mirror and the smaller one just has a panel in the middle. There's some fairly simple joinery, a few shelves to make. And on the back of the cabinets, there's these French cleats for hanging onto the wall. For the colour, I was going to use this driftwood effect die. So first off, it was time to prepare a cut list and size up all of the components. So like many people, my first woodwork project involved buying some cheap pine from B&Q, getting some walnut stain, chucking it on there and then I thought I'd solve the problem to having beautiful furniture but very cheaply. Of course, the actual result was lots of blotching, not very good finish and something that just looked a bit dodgy. So many years on, with a bit more experience, I've decided to revisit colouring wood and I'm going to use some dye. So the challenge here is that the dye doesn't actually penetrate that far into the wood. So all of the finishing and shaping of edges, it all needs to be done before you apply the dye. And the second challenge is if you apply the dye after you've assembled the piece, where there's lots of difficult corners to get into, you don't get a very consistent finish. So the idea for this project is that I'm going to make all the components first to a finished state take it all apart, then apply the dye to get a nice, even, consistent finish, and then finally assemble it all at the end. If you've got a reasonably good router table setup, you can buy some amazing cabinet maker bits for doing all sorts of jobs. The ones I'm using in this video is the Rutland six-piece drawer and door set. I've put the website link in the description, so go and check it out. I've always found them to be really good quality. For the door panels and the backs of the cabinets, I'm using this tulip wood veneer from the Wood Veneer Hub. When you first offer up the veneers, if you're not happy with the joint, you can always then fine tune it by getting two straight pieces, clamping them together with the veneer between and then just fine tuning the edges with a little block plate. Thank you. 
For the mirrored panel, I use some acrylic mirror at 3mm. I then use some contact adhesive to fix this to 3mm of hardboard. I then flip this over and then veneer the tulip wood onto the back of it. possible I always like to support people and businesses who I feel that are just doing a great job at everything they do and you know really putting in that extra effort. So for the wood dye and the varnish I've gone for Little Fairs. They've got a really cool little website, they're a UK business and it's all blended by hand. When it arrived I had a letter with it that was from Mr Little Fair. It said how pleased he was that I bought his product gave me some examples of how to use it, and also some instructions on mixing it and storing it. How awesome is that? Nice one, Mr. Little Fair. I've gone for a colour called Driftwood, and although I'm not sure the camera does it total justice, the finish is stunning, particularly once you apply the varnish on top. At this point I need to give a little shout out. I was watching this channel the other day called Badger Workshop and I noticed he had this circular blade with a flat ground tooth on it used for creating clean and even grooves. So I went to his affiliate links page, ordered one up and here it is. I thought on this project it would be a good one for putting it through its paces. I've put a link to his page in the description. Nice one Mr Badger, keep up the good work. I used to have this cheap shelf pin jig and to be honest it's utter rubbish and I've finally given up on it. So for this project I've just made my own simple jig. I have though just ordered the new Craig one uh, but it didn't arrive in time for this project. If you ever want me to do reviews or look into some of the tools you see in more detail just let me know. I'm always happy to kind of post shorter videos going into a bit more detail. I bought some cheap Euro hinges from Wix, uh, although when I started fitting them I realised I was right on the limit for this thickness of wood. This surprised me a little bit because the Blum ones that I normally use I think go up to at least an inch if not a bit more. Ok, it's confession time. At this stage my battery ran out on the camera and I didn't actually film me making the French cleats for the back. But it's a pretty straightforward process. I just used some veneered MDF at 18mm that I had lying around. I ripped a cut down the middle that was 40 degrees. 
you fix one part of it to the cabinet at the top and you fix the other part to the wall. Simple. Okay, I think this one's pretty much done. Apologies for the terrible camera work here at the end. Might have to get myself a new camera soon. I'll post some more pictures up on the UK Home Woodworker Instagram page. See you next time.